Let us now understand how to solve quadratic inequalities using intervals. We have already done examples and solve quadratic inequalities using graphical method and algebraic method. Now this intervals analysis is an excellent method by which we can actually solve any polynomial, right? Now here, let's try to do quadratic equation first. Now to solve these inequalities, it's a good idea to bring all the terms together to one side. Rather, write the equation in the standard form and then solve the inequality. So first step is to write it in standard form. I mean, take all the terms on one side. So we get x square plus 2x minus 15 greater than or equal to 0. Now we need to factor this. Once you factor, you know easily what are the values which can make this expression 0. So to factor, we are looking for two numbers whose product is minus 15. That means p times q equals to minus 15 and some of these two numbers should be plus 2. Well, the numbers are 5 and 3. 5 positive and 3 negative, correct? So using these two numbers, we can factor. So we get x plus 5 times x minus 2, uh, sorry, minus 3 greater than or equal to 0, right? 5 and minus 3 are the two numbers. So we get an inequality with factors on the left side. Now, since we have the factors, it's easy for us to figure out where are the zeros. So next step is to find the zeros. So first step, as you've seen, was factoring. So that is step number one. And now step number two is to find zeros. Now zeros are, each factor can be equated to zero. So we have x plus five equals to zero. That gives us x equals to minus five or x minus 3 equals to 0, that gives us x equals to 3. Now when we have zeros, then you know, zeros are going to divide our interval into different parts, correct? So let me just sketch a line here with zeros. So we have two zeros, one is at minus 5, the other one is at 3. Let us say these are the two zeros for us. Correct? So one is at minus 5, the other one is at 3. As you can see here, if this is my x-axis and these are the two zeros, these zeros have divided this axis into three intervals. Now, we need to analyze which interval is positive and which interval is negative for the given function. Since we want greater than or equal to 0, these zeros are part of solution. So let me just draw a solid thing here indicating that these are part of our solution. Now we are interested in the interval which will also be a part of solution. To find the interval, we'll analyze these intervals, right? Now what we do here is we take test points in these three intervals. Let me draw lines for the test point and let us say the test point between minus infinity to minus 5b minus 6 between minus 5 to 3 0 is a good test point and then beyond 3 we can take 4 as a test point now once we have selected the test points we need to see whether our factors are positive or negative at that test point right so now let me make two more columns for these factors the factors for us are x plus 5 and x minus 3. Now if I put minus 6 for x plus 5, x as minus 6, I get a negative value. We are not really interested in the value but in the sign. We are interested in the sign. 0 plus 5 gives us positive value. 4 plus 5 is a positive value. Now for the second factor which is x minus 3, if I put minus 6 for x, I get a negative value. 0 for the x gives me a negative value. 4 for the x, 4 minus 3 is 1, which is positive. So we got the signs for both the factors in these three intervals. Now you should remember this interval is from minus infinity to minus 5. And here we have an interval between minus 5 
and 3 and third interval is from 3 to infinity. Let us check. In these intervals, what is the sign of product of these two? That means, what is the sign of x plus 5 times x minus 3? Now, when I multiply two negatives, what do I get? I get a positive, right? If I multiply opposite signs, positive and negative, I do get a negative sign, okay? And two same signs which are positive gives me positive. Now, I'm trying to solve inequality which says greater than equal to 0. Greater than equal to 0 means positive sign, right? So, that is part of our solution. Do you see that? Including the zeros since it is greater than equal to. So, now from here, we can write down the solution. And the solution is x belongs to real numbers, correct? Where x is either less than equal to minus 5, right? x is either less than equal to minus 5 or x is greater than equal to the 0 at 3, right? Greater than equal to 3. So that becomes our solution. And that is how we analyze the intervals and get the solution. I hope you understand and appreciate the technique. And you can see that this technique can be extended for any number of factors. The strategy is exactly the same. First, find the zeros, which will divide your plane into, if there are n zeros, n plus 1 planes, or intervals, I should say. Now, within those intervals, take test points. Now, check whether your function is positive or negative in those intervals. If you are looking for greater than 0, then you are looking for a positive interval. If you are looking for less than, then negative, correct? In this case, it was greater than equal to. Therefore, zeros are also part of our solution, right? And the interval where we get positive value going away from the zero towards infinities is a part of solution. And that is how we find or we find solution to quadratic inequalities using intervals. I hope you appreciate it. Thank you.